Hello everyone, a short but interesting video from Zaporizhia here near Robotina, a key region at the moment. This video playing now shows Russia using Ural trucks as makeshift APCs right on the front line, actually taking part in the big assaults on the settlement. It goes about as well as you'd expect sending an unarmoured Ural truck covered in coke cages to a battlefield. This is madness. Now, Using those desert cross golf carts we've seen in the past few months is bad enough, but they at least serve a purpose. Russia uses them to get to key positions quickly and undetected, dismount the troops and then hold these positions. Using a Ural as an APC is serving no purpose whatsoever. There's no benefit of using these that you won't get with an MTLB, a BTR or a BMP. The big slowish, clunky vehicles, easily spotted, so the stealthy aspect of the desert crossers is gone, and the armour aspect of using the BMP or MTLBs is also gone. To me, this can only hint at a severe armour shortage for Russia, if we resorted to using coke cage Urals in this role. The locations of this have been on screen now, geolocated by IMI on Twitter, so you can indeed see that these are frontline losses. Not the typical place where we see Ural trucks. These don't go to the front line like this. Certainly not leading the charge. So, is there an armour shortage? Or at least an APC and infantry fighter vehicle shortage? I definitely think so. At the start of the war, Russia had 4,080 BMP-1s, BMP-2s and BMP-3s in service. This data is from the military balance. Russia does have large reserve numbers. But well, those numbers are inaccurate, because we don't know how many of those are actually combat ready. Remember, we saw satellite imagery a couple of years ago, showing many of these reserve vehicles rusting in open fields. So, here, I'm just looking at active at the start of a war. APCs, we have 7,050. This includes MTLBs, BTR variants and BRDMs. So in February 2022, quite big numbers. Not included here though the BMDs which are with the airborne forces, I don't know exactly how many of those are in service. But total APC and infantry fighting vehicle number over 11,000 vehicles. Oryx shows 3,812 infantry fighting vehicles lost so far. This is mainly BMP variants, but Oryx also includes the BTR-82 as an infantry fighting vehicle. APCs 421. This is mainly the older BTR variants. Armoured fighting vehicles, 1,290, and this number include the MTLB and other MTLB variants. That's over 5,500 of these types of vehicles lost so far. These are massive numbers. Now you may think, that's less than half, Russia still has plenty. Well, firstly, not all of these have been deployed in Ukraine. You have to expect a number of them will be kept in Russia just in case we need there for civil disturbances, such as the Wagner Rebellion last year, or border issues with Russia's neighbours. We've got quite a few flimsy borders which do need protecting, and things like that. Another number won't be available for operations as they'll be undergoing maintenance and will be, therefore, inactive. And additionally, here is Deep States' map. In red, highlighted, are the key areas where Russia is carrying out large-scale offensive operations at the moment. So south in Zaporizhia, where this one took place. In the east, we have Novo Mihailovka, Avdiivka region, just to the north of it, Bakhmut, north of that. The Kremlin axis, there, and then at the top, the Kupiansk axis. All of which need armour support. Not to mention, Russia needs armoured vehicles and troops in Belgorod and Kursk to protect against incursions there. We also have BTR-80s and BTR-82s and smaller numbers of BMPs deployed near Kherson to protect the Dnipro River from crossings. And then there are areas all along that front line which Russia will need armoured fighting vehicles and infantry fighting vehicles to defend, lest Ukraine see a weakness to exploit. Their forces are very stretched at the moment. And given we're now seeing Euro trucks being covered in coke cages and sent to the front to be used as APCs, I honestly think we're seeing a big shortage of armoured fighting vehicles and APC type vehicles for Russia, because I can't see why else they would resort to that. Again, these don't give any advantage over a BMP or an MTLB. And again, 
The desert crossers are awful, but they do have the advantage of being quite nippy and stealthier, and possibly not setting off some types of mine. So the use of those could be a tactical reason rather than a shortage. As for these Euro trucks, though, I can't see any reason to use these other than they just don't have the BMPs or MTLBs available. Logistics is also likely playing a key part. This is in Zaporizhia, which is resupplied heavily via the Rapua class landing ships going from Novorossiysk to Crimea. With Ukraine destroying a large number in the past and damaging a couple more recently, which are now undergoing repairs in Sevastopol, I think it's very likely that Russia's logistical lines are wavering as well. And that will likely get much, much worse if Ukraine can hit the Crimean Bridge again. Now, I've said for a while now that breaking Russia's logistics will be key for Ukraine in these regions. And while this doesn't play into the supply of BMPs and the armoured vehicle shortage, or rather potential armoured vehicle shortage, it's worth taking a look before we finish. These are the losses identified by Andy Perpetua on Twitter, who does an amazing job tracking these. He regularly posts updates on his Twitter account. These are in the past couple of days Russian and Ukrainian losses. And just look at that huge number of trucks here. 22 large trucks, Euros and Kamaz, and a handful of smaller loads destroyed recently. Russia's logistics are being hit hard. Now, we're also using these important logistical vehicles as APCs as well, which is quite interesting. So we're going to have to wait and see if these strikes on the trucks and Russia deploying them to the front as APCs may soon have an effect on Russia's supply chain. So that's it for this video. Hope you found it interesting. Now I'm going to play a thank you message from the Ukraine Volunteer Center about the handover of a truck from a recent fundraiser. Thanks so much for watching and big thanks to everybody who contributed to the fundraiser. Thanks so much and take care everybody. Good afternoon, greetings from the Ukrainian Volunteer Center. Today I would like to express my sincere gratitude on behalf of all soldiers for your generosity, kindness and support. Your generous donations for the purchase of a car for our brave defenders have shown your ultimate dedication and care for truth to serve our country. This gesture is much more than just a gift for uh, a car. It is a symbol of your deep gratitude and respect for truth who risk their lives every day to protect us and our values. Your support not only made their daily tasks easy, but also gave them confidence that their duty is valued and recognized by society. We owe you not only words of gratitude, but also action. Your good deeds inspire us to achieve even greater results and serve our country with even greater enthusiasm and dedication. May your generosity return in a double measure. We are deeply grateful for your generosity and promise to live up to your expectations with our uh, and and they were and they very service and protection. Thank you for your ending support. All recipes and reports will be available as usual at the link in the descriptions of this video. Cheers, head of the farm Dmitry, with love from Ukraine.